Hey everyone, we've got Nell Walker here with Accumulated Knowledge uh, with some more of that sweet, sweet legacy, bringing you uh, Grixis Delver against Death and Taxes against uh, fellow Team Card Order member Chris Anderson. Uh, <clears throat> so we are on the draw here. <sighs> and this hand is pretty, pretty fine. Uh, we've got a Force of Will. We got a pair of them actually. Some blue cards some fetches to get to get our lands, uh, an early threat, a cantrip. This hand's actually pretty great, so I'm going to keep. And uh, he's on a mulligan to six, so. So, yeah, this one is looking pretty good. The real question is if on um, turn one he, he plays a, a spell that we want a force of will, if we keep, uh, you know, all of our spells in our hand, or keep the other force of will. I'm actually leaning towards pitching the Vendillion click if he had cast a spell. But luckily, we don't even have to worry about that because he cast nothing. So here I'm just going to fetch up Volcanic Island first. It's generally what I get first because uh, there's three of them and only two underground ones. So I'm just going to jam that Delver and pass the turn. I have a strong feeling that this card is going to get sort of splashed, but uh, that's totally fine because we have another threat. And I, I think it's much <clears throat> more worth it for us to, to counter his creatures. But unfortunately, he played Cavern of Souls, uh, which is our worst nightmare when, when it comes to, to Force of Will. Yeah, so I really wish now that I had Force of Will that, that, that sort of plushers. But I mean, aside from Cavern of Souls, there's really nothing that that can stop us from, from countering his guys. You know, you could play uh, an Aether Vial, Get, get guys in that way, but but I actually think it's just it was just worth it for us to not use it, and we just got punished. But you know that will happen from time to time. Okay, so all these cards are great. Uh, we want we want them all. I actually think we're gonna put the polluted delta last because I don't want to fetch away any of these. Uh, then the empowermancer, and then the wasteland, and I would not like to shuffle. The wasteland is actually a great pick here, uh, just to to stop this cavern from, from doing doing its dirty work. <sighs> Even helps us cast the million click. Um, so yeah, this is looking fine. Because he only has four cards in his hand. Phyrexian Revoker. That is something that we can counter, but it's probably not worth it to counter just because we have Young Pyromancer on top. And those tokens, you know, they snowball pretty fast. And it seems like he's missing lands here. So uh, we might be able to get ahead pretty fast with this young Pyromancer. Pyromancer, Wasteland, get rid of the cavern. All right, so I'm pretty fine with this uh, whole board state. Yeah, he's definitely, definitely the pressure is coming in though. So there's that. So on the following turn, actually, I think I'm just gonna cast uh, <clears throat> the brainstorm or or nothing on our main face. But I'm I'm not I'm not gonna cast Vendillion Click here, likely. Uh, just especially not on his draw step, just because I want to be able to cast a Force of Will or a Daze or something through this Thalia. So here I'm just gonna. Bash for two with the Empowermancer. Um, and this actually keeps the the Phyrexian Revoker in check because we can brainstorm, make a 1 1 and block it. Uh, he can still attack with the Thalia pretty safely, but, uh, ooh, a wasteland. And luckily, our hand is pretty well protected against something like Wasteland, too. So, yeah, he's just jamming in with the, the Phyrexian Revoker, which I'm pretty happy about, you know. I guess Brainstorm is really one of the only cards that punishes him here. Okay, so he decided against it, which does seem like a, a better play to me. I sort of want to Brainstorm end of turn, uh, just to play around something like uh, Swords to Plowshares, say. And also this Daze is just looking kind of un- unappealing to me here. 
and if we brainstorm before we crack this fetch land, then uh, okay. So he did he did have those sorts of splashers, which is uh, a pretty tight play by him. Uh, the, the sequencing that he used to be able to make us crack our fetch land to pay one for a spell if we want to cast it to get around that uh, the Thalia. So uh, we're gonna grab a Volk, put a blue. Days. I'm gonna bounce the C actually just to protect it from the wasteland. Get a one one. Finish resolving this days. Cast a brainstorm. I'm just gonna put a pair of force of wolves back on top because they're not doing a whole lot. Hmm. I kind of want to <clears throat> just play underground C and attack for two. So this play is like pretty bad against him not casting very many spells and just wastelanding here. But if he does that, we can click. I actually think we're going to click ourselves to get rid of one of these force of wills just because we have too many of them and they're, they're not really helping us at this point. Uh, Thalia is really good against Forcible. Because, I mean, the main reason that Forcible is so good in this deck is because we never have to pay mana for it. And when it costs one, it just, you know, makes doing other things a little more inconvenient and, you know, therefore making Forcible less good than it usually is. And it's generally pretty, pretty dang good. So, uh, hmm. Casting Aether Vial. I think we'll just Forcible that. this other forceful all right you still come in hot with Thalia so we'll opt not to block that one I guess he's technically still winning the race here so he figures why not just attack with Thalia uh, we we're gonna come in hot with these elementals so I think <clears throat> that if we can We'll, we'll jam the Vendillion click, but it doesn't really seem like we'll have, you know, very much time for that. So it might make more sense just to another Aether file. Hmm. So generally, I don't really like casting Brainstorm unless you got something good, really good to do with it, like have a fetch line afterwards or looking for something desperately. But I think that this is going to make one of those exceptions. Just because I want to want to get a little look on, on what's on top. And maybe if we get a daze or something, we can use that instead of having to use the Force of Will here. Um, ooh, or something like that. Spell Pierce would have been nice. But it does not look like that is, is going to happen. So next turn, what's our plan? We can cast the Ponder and Deathrite Shaman. Um, right now we can just put back the Click and the Probe. I think that we want the Click, but don't really want the Probe. Huh, this is actually kind of a tough decision. So it's like kind of good to know his hand with the Jutaxian Probe. Um, it might not even be worth it to use the Forcible here, which sounds a little crazy, but only really helps him get in a one drop the turn after that. So let's say he has something like a mother runes in his hand. He could be casting that anyways with, with the planes that he has. Um, any two drop that he wants to cast, we could force a full of that. So it might just be more worth it for us to, you know, say, okay, that's fine. Resolves, take the hit for two, untap, draw something, play death, right? Shaman, leave up spell pierce and force of will only really bad against him putting in something like a mother of runes. And I think generally he has, you know, many, many other cards to, to cast. So I'm just going to put back probe, click, and I'm not going to counter this. So he's kind of second guessing, you know, do I want to keep attacking with this Thalia? 
um, cause we are on a four turn clock to it. And it basically means that we can't, you know, crack any fetches. So, so yeah, he opted, opted not to, to swing in with Thalia again. I'm just going to bash in for four. I'm, I'm fine sacrificing an elemental. Um, yeah, put him at, just, just to keep clocking in. It's really important that we keep up the pressure in this game. Jam and Dirty Shaman. I think Deathrite will do a lot of work here, actually. Oh, so something that I overlooked <laughs> was that Phyrexian Revoker is naming Deathrite Shaman. So that's a little unfortunate that we kept this Deathrite Shaman, thinking that it would be really great here. Um, whereas, you know, it does nothing. Yes, yeah, Phyrexian Revoker. But <sighs> that is all right. It, it's actually a fine blocker. Uh, it plus any 1-1. One one, Deals with Thalia, so that's a pretty good advantage. All right, so that card's definitely getting forcible. The question is, what card do we want to pitch? And here, I think that Spell Pierce would is probably not going to, you know, do us very good. Uh, so I think pitching Spell Pierce here, okay. We're just going to keep up the pressure with our our squad of 1-1s. One and I almost want to just cast the Vendillion Click like before Aether Vial gets a counter, uh, just to take a look at what's in his hand and decide, you know, oh, is there a two-drop in there that's worth it for us to take? Or are all his cards, you know, not, <clears throat> not really worth it? Um, I'm going to swing for five first, though, actually. Definitely gonna just yeah, do that's an easy block. And he's deciding to block with a one one two. Or sorry, block revoker on a one one two, which makes a bit of sense. He's pretty far behind here. Um so I'm just gonna jam this click now. Take a look at what he got. See if there's anything worth it for us to take. So his hand is Revoker, Fiend Hunter, and Mangara. And I don't think that any of those cards are uh, good enough for us to you know, want to get rid of here. So I'm just going to let him keep all three of them and keep it going. If he draws the planes, um, then it's pretty unfortunate, you know, he'll just be able to eat our Vendillion click. But I think that letting him dig deeper into his deck for a card that's good against uh, these is even worse than just, you know, letting it happen as is. So. Ooh, what has he drawn? Oh, no, he had the Roker he had, so... Yeah, renames to three shaman. Makes a lot of sense. Ooh, dismember. So if we play three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so it just makes sense to to use the dismember here for, for two colorless and four life. Uh, just because it makes him block with the Phyrexian Revoker here. Um, and we get in a, a nice attack with everything, putting him down to one. Basically making it, you know, like we have too much pressure for him to get back into this game. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way this game ended up playing out, actually. Um, I thought we were going to be pretty far behind with the early Cavern of Souls, but he was, <laughs> he was stuck. Uh, the Thalia kind of hurt him because he could only cast, you know, like one Aether Vial a turn. It seemed like there was one point where he had two Aether Vials in his hand and he could only cast one of them because he had two lands and Thalia was hurting him. So while Thalia is a fantastic card against our deck, sometimes his deck draws all of, all of its spells and then Thalia is, you know, pretty bad. And I think that our, our counter spells were pretty timely. You know, they countered spells that really mattered. They countered the Stoneforge Mystic. They countered one of the Aether Vials. Uh, we could have countered the second one, but I think at that point we had gotten to... A board state where Aether Vial was a little slow to deal with all of our pressure. So I'm pretty happy with the way that we played. Um, and yeah, time to move on to sideboarding. So here uh, we're on the draw. Um, the cards that I think are the most important are the Engineered Explosives, the Pithing Needle, 
Forked Bolt, Ancient Grudge, and Dark Blast. I think those are our five, you know, like these have to come in. There are five great ones. Uh, Baleful Strix is all right. I, th I can see bringing in some. So Fairy Vortex is also all right. Um, but it costs a lot of mana. And Death and Taxes is basically a mana denial deck. They play Thalia, so it's probably not worth it for the Vortexes. Um, I actually don't think Strix is fantastic either, uh, even though sometimes I bring them in. Uh, but I think that the worst cards here are definitely Spell Pierce, the Therapies, and the Counter Spells. So I think some combination of these five come out and in come those five. Um, another match that we were playing, we took out the Cabal Therapies because uh, generally on the draw, I don't think that they're fantastic. But uh, the more games that I play versus Death and Taxes, I think that it might be okay to leave some in just because it's so good against uh, Stoneforge Mystic. And it's also just pretty all right if they have stuff like... Uh, it seems like Chris's list plays a lot of three drops. He plays Mangara, he plays Fiend Hunter. Um, so being able to get this stuff before, you know, before you can just put it into play with uh, Aether Vial or casting it off of something like, uh, you know, Cavern of Souls, it, it might be worth it, you know, to, to keep in, keep in more of these and keep out more of these. So I'm going to take out the four dazes and the spell pierce for now and bring in these five and uh, see how that goes for this game too. <sighs> All right, so this game will be on the draw. And I actually think this hand is fantastic. Uh, it sucks that it only has one land, but it has a threat, it has a cantrip, and it has two counter spells. So I don't think this is really too mulligan. Like we can't really mulligan this hand. So let's keep. Plains Mother of Runes. Yeah, that card is way too good against us, so we just have to counter it. The reason I, I pitched a ponder there is because we have another ponder, and I kind of want to keep this other Force of Will, because I think it actually can be pretty good against us if, uh, if we can you know, cement the board with some, some good, good threats, stay, stay you know, relatively far ahead, just get there. All right. Ooh, another mom. So now that we've stuck the Delver, and it looks like that it's possible he doesn't have another white source because he pretty aggressively wasteland us. I mean, I guess that doesn't mean necessarily that he doesn't have the the white source, but he was so aggressive with the wasteland that ah oh, maybe he just has more lands. I don't know. I kind of want to keep this force and just ride this Delver. So I'm going to let that mom resolve. And I think that we're going to use our Wasteland on the Caracas no matter what. All right, Delver. Jutaxian Pro, I would love to reveal that. I actually think we're going to use it right now. That will help us decide on whether or not we want to use this Wasteland. Okay, so he has a Ganjo Castle, Caracas, Liege. Here, I'll, I'll write these down. Castle, Liege, Gite, and another Caracas. Okay, so I'm really glad that we drew that probe actually because I would have just used this wasteland and it doesn't do anything uh, against two Caracases. So the fact that we can use it on uh, the Iganjo Castle is going to be super valuable actually. And if he just, you know, plays castle right now and jams the Umazashi day, I'm just going to force the will it because it's way too good to let it happen. Ooh, he drew a Stoneforge Mystic, which is even better for us to force the will. Now we can wasteland the castle pretty happily and just get in there with some Delver Beats. Hopefully we pick up uh, a fetch land so that uh, Deathrite Shaman, you know, Start getting some, some death right in. But, uh, you know, even if we don't, it's fine. Uh, we're pretty far ahead with just this Delver. So, oh, that's quite lucky. Killed the castle. So we know his whole hand. It is, uh, let's just take a quick look. So he played the castle. So it's Liege, Jite, and a second Caracas. 
And luckily, Caracas is legendary, so he just doesn't have another land that he can play here. All right. So this one is looking great, unless uh, it's going to... Well, I guess if he just draws a single land, then he can play it next turn, hook up the mom. But if he doesn't, then we're pretty far ahead. Okay. So he's just valuing getting out the GK right now, which makes sense. Um, it's a super valuable card in this matchup. Uh, luckily, we have a dismember now for it. So if he if he draws a land and decides to suit up, you know, come in with the mom, then we just have a dismember for it. So, and it looks like that's really the only play he can make. Oh, so he drew a Phyrexian Revoker, which is pretty good. Uh, gonna get rid of this force. Drain him for two. Start getting in there with the Insectile Adoration. Ooh, that's pretty annoying. That we don't really have a red source to use anymore. Um, but I think that it's all right. So his last card is the leash. Um, if he suits up with the jit and attacks, I kind of feel like we have to block, which is really unfortunate. Um, if we get lucky, uh, he'll just he'll just use uh, the mom here. Ooh, so so I think the reason that he used mom is because the only cards that can really punish him uh, from here are something like uh, something like a a dark blast or the dismember that we have right now. So luckily uh, we have dark blast as our dismember as well as bolt in our hand because uh, that will just. I will just finish off this game. A, pr a pretty, a pretty lucky one to have, um, having exactly the dismember to, to kill off the revoker, and exactly the bolt to shoot him in the face afterwards. So I mean, yeah, I think I think this game just ended up, you know, really fortunate for us. Everything kind of turned in our favor. Red, Lightning Bolt face, swing in with the Delver of Secrets, finish him off. All right, so we got him. So that game, I think what happened was um, we got a pretty lucky blind flip with the Delver, uh, letting us know that we didn't have to use the Wasteland immediately. Both of our Forcibles were super important. Uh, one of them getting, getting the Mom, which wasn't, you know, too insane because uh, he ended up having a second one. But if he had just had two moms in play, then we never would have been able to resolve the dismember. Uh, the JIT would have just snowballed to us losing. Uh, there, there wouldn't have been very much that we could do about any of his creatures, and we would have just lost. And the second one countering the Stone Forge, which would have just let him put in the JIT the turn after, maybe even get a Batter Skull and put that into play. There, we're not really beating that ever. So uh, so having the two forts of Wolves was really important. Um, but the most you know, the best card for us that game was definitely the Dismember on the turn where uh, he felt like he had to, you know, protect his Phyrexian Revoker against the Deathrite, which is pretty defensible, but I think it might have ended up being better for him if he had just uh, let, you know, let the trade happen with the Deathrite and the Revoker, maybe then use the GT counters to, to kill the Insectile Aberration or gain four life. Um, obviously, it's better to kill Insectile Aberration, but just having, you know, Jite up and trading for the death rate shaman while being able to use the mom still seems much more valuable to me than getting possibly blown out by a dismember or a dark blast. So that's what ended up happening. Um, again, this matchup is, is very close. I think that they're pretty favored. It's maybe, maybe 60, 40 gets a little better after board slightly because we have some, some better options, but it's definitely not a great matchup. Uh, it's pretty close though. And if you play well, you can definitely beat it with this Grixis deck. Um, I love Grixis. It's a great deck. Um, 
but it definitely has a lot of, you know, less than 50 matchups throughout the field. A lot, a lot of 50 too, and, and some pretty favorable ones, but there are some decks that are just built to, to line up well against what Grixis Silver does. But as you see, um, it's still quite possible, you know, for the Grixis Silver to win. Uh, 